Hi guys, I welcome you all to the next video on my channel Aid Virtual. This video is on formative and summative assessments, the two broad classifications of assessment. Let's first look at formative assessments and then at summative assessments. Formative assessments and summative assessments are two terms introduced by Michael Scriven in the year 1967. Formative assessments are conducted at regular intervals. The results of formative assessments improve instruction. These assessments are therefore pedagogic in nature. Formative assessments are generally low stakes tests. They are viewed as assessments for learning. Formative assessments play a crucial role in promoting learning. This is because it is done during the process of learning. An example of a formative assessment is the test conducted at the end of each lesson. This kind of evaluation helps learners find out where they are and where they ought to be. Unit tests, weekly tests and monthly tests fall under this category. Formative assessment therefore enables a continuity in the evaluation process. These tests are generally Teacher made. Formative assessment is tailor made by the teacher for his or her own class. Since formative assessments are conducted at regular intervals, it provides feedback and suggestions to students for error correction and improvement. Therefore, formative feedback is the most important feature of formative assessment. Formative assessments provide feedback for both the teachers and the learners. According to Geeta Durairajan, when the feedback from a test aids in the enhancement of classroom instruction, they are said to be formative. Margaret Heritage in her book, Formative Assessment Making It Happen, says, In formative assessment, teachers provide descriptive feedback to the students about the status of their learning in relation to the success criteria and give cues to the students about what they can do to progress and close the gap. Therefore, formative assessment helps in closing the gaps in learning and also facilitates improvement in the process of learning and teaching. The figure shows the cycle of formative assessment as given by Laura Greenstein in her book, What Teachers Really Need To. The process of formative assessment starts with finding out the objectives, goals and standards that are to be attained at the end of the process. Instruction is targeted in order to achieve these objectives. Data is collected regarding the understanding level of students and feedback is given accordingly. Feedback calls the attention of the learners to their errors and weaknesses. Formative assessment is therefore a systematic way of directing the process of teaching and learning. Now let's look at summative assessments. On the contrary, summative assessments are year-end tests. They are classificatory in nature. Summative assessments are traditional and can be viewed as assessments of learning. They are high-stakes tests. Evaluation that concludes a whole period of learning with ranks and grades are summative assessments. These tests provide no feedback. Penny Err says it may contribute little or nothing to ongoing teaching and learning. In short, it can be said that all final examinations are summative in nature. Its contribution to teaching is either nil or little. Summative tests are conducted by educational institutions or by some external authority. In this type of evaluation, the focus is more on the product rather than on the process. The act of learning is reduced to, the, to a mere mechanical exercise. Students wrote, learn and reproduce information. Researchers have also proved that summative assessments impose fear and anxiety on the test takers. These assessments 
check if learners are eligible to take up further learning. To conclude, it can be said in words of Peter Wando that formative assessments are pedagogic and summative assessments are classificatory. Derek Rountree in his book says that formative assessments emphasize on potential and summative assessments emphasize on actual development. Furthermore, Robert Stake, an educational researcher, wittily remarked that it is formative when the cook tastes the soup and it is summative when the guests taste the soup. For further information on formative and summative assessments, you can use the reading list given below in the description. Hope this video was interesting. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share and subscribe. See you guys later.